back to Design 380. Uh, this time we're going to be modeling a belt drive. And we're going to be following Shigley's uh, example 17.4, page 907 in our text. Um, he is uh, going through a bunch of work to uh, check things like uh, service life and safety factor, various things like that. We're going to go with just using the sort of bare data here. Uh, also, we're going to make it a little shorter. He's using a B112 belt which gives us the B profile and the length 112 inch. Um, we're gonna use a smaller one to fit it nicer or smaller into the screen here. Um, the first step is to find some sheaves. I've already uploaded these in to uh, Fusion here. We'll be using these in a second. The temptation here is to insert into current design. We're gonna do that later. Uh, first step here is to save this guy. Uh, we'll call this uh, belt drive uh, one. In case I screw up, and we'll go 2023. Uh, the reason we're saving this, uh, we can't insert into unsaved designs. So just let that go while we go over and have a look. Um, one uh, way to get these sheaves is to go ahead and look either in McMaster car, insert manufacturer part, or insert trace parts. Uh, trace parts. And I believe insert manufacturer part is all driven now by the same database. Uh, there's a website that also works called 3D Find It. It's a little more complicated, but it lets you uh, search in a bit more obvious way. Notice the download CAD button here. Um, I searched through, I won't make you sit through this, I found a company called Dodge or a supplier called Dodge. They make belted drives, feet belts of the size we need. Notice the datum diameter belt. And we can adjust things. So for example, look at the part number right now, uh, 3B74 half. If we change this to, uh, oh, let's log in if we can. If we change this to a half, from a half to say, it'll show us the bores that are available, like say two. Uh, we can see what that does to our part. Uh, once we get the part we want, we can go ahead and download this and see that it was last updated 2021. So this is all very handy. Uh, this uh, can be quite useful. Uh, so for example, we can show it, ask it to show us some dimensions and move around in the usual sort of procedure. We can get some screenshots of this, so on and so forth. This is how I got these two guys. I used the 7.4 and the other one, which was the 11. Downloaded them as steps, uploaded them into Fusion. Those files are available on D2L for you. If you don't have D2L, here's the parts. Uh, moving on, uh, what we want to do from here is set this up first. The key thing here. Uh, if you're looking at Shigley or have access to something like Shigley, he has a center distance along with a formula. Let's have a look. Um, we're going to be using a B60 instead, as we went through here. And we have a center distance formula here. Also, we have some parameters we need to put into the part file to get this to run. So just keep all this in mind. Uh, we'll just do this in a methodical routine sort of way here. So first, uh, we're going to put a sketch on here on our top level uh, to control uh, the parts for us because we're going to be doing a bunch of work with center distance uh, parameter driven stuff. Also a series of uh, components that will control all the parts. I'm just going to set up a sort of U-shaped sketch here. And just because I like things to be constrained, I'm going to make all these equal. And we're going to have a center distance here. We're going to use these guys to uh, control our parts here. Just getting everything set up. I'm going to use two center lines here. And that's it. So the only thing we're going to have here is this dimension, which is going to be eventually our center distance. Right now we're in millimeters. Uh, this problem comes out as in inch. 
Let's go ahead here and change that over. That can be done inside the sketch. Finish the sketch if you wish. Well, we might go back into it and rename this as, for example, uh, drive load or something like that. Nice. Now, right now we've got our base part, uh, which is our design. Inside, we're going to create two more components. We're going to use these to control our soon to be placed sheaves or V belt pulley. Just going to hide this argument for a second. And as usual in sheave land, you want to call this big D and little d. We'll put the little d to the left, big D to the right. We're going to place them at the ends of these lines. Okay, so first step, make some components. Uh, I'm going to use the selected parent, which is the top level. And because I don't have a part number here, I'm just going to call this D sheave. I want it to be the same. Let's make sure that's no, accidentally. Don't want that to be active. Make the other one at the same level. Gonna unactivate this. Call this uh, big D sheep. Make sure I'm using the right words. Now, what we can do here is have a look at what we get from this. We get origins. Right now they're sitting on top of each other. So it's tempting here to uh, go ahead here and just start placing things. However, the goal is to try and get this organized. Right now, I can't grab these because it won't let me grab the origin. As soon as we start putting bodies or geometry into here, we'll be able to drag them around. Just keep that in mind. I'm gonna hide the origins for now. In D sheave, little d, I'm going to place my little sheave. So that's our 3B74. Notice 74 is 7.4 inch. 3B11, 0 is 11.0 inch. The 2 dash 2 is the bore in these sheaves. Let's go ahead here and just insert into current design. Make sure, though, that you've got the right component activated. It'll put it inside of it. So let's try that again. Insert in the current design. Make sure it goes into the little d. There it is. Uh, notice where the origin is. It's at the back of the part, which of course, well, no, of course, which matches where the origin is. If I can grab that on the file up on the web here, in the cloud, I suppose these days. So that looks okay. Just leave it there. It'll probably both be the same. That looks fine. And we just get what we get. So there's a keyway there, along with a grub screw to hold it, and a saw slit for clamping onto the shaft. We can see here that our sketch in the background is probably not that great. It's a, that's not a big enough center to see, but nonetheless, let's keep on going here. Now highlight the big D sheet with a ghost out the other end and put that one into the big sheave, into the big sheave component, if that makes sense. Think for a second, it'll place it, just leave it where it shows up, say okay. Now, you can hide the data panel. If we go back to the top level, just click the radio button, you'll see we see both. Now, what we've got is a not great situation. Press Shift N to see the colors, nice. And we can recolorize these if we wish, but right now they're all loose. And even worse, the hub is loose in each component. So what we need to do is lock everything down into each component first. So under assemble, rigid group. You can pick it from the top, make sure that include child components are just toggled on, make sure this is on. Pick the little D sheave, it'll lock not only the bodies within it, but also the bodies to the component. This is a good step for us to do. Do it again. Right click. You can right click and just go to new if you want to be fancy. Pull up to new. Pick D. Big D, sorry. Say OK. Now when we pull, everything goes together. If we show our origins, see what happens here. Do we get the origins to go? 
You notice his origins are fixed to the screen size. I get the origin moving, so the component is shifting as I pull. Perfect. That sounds good. Now we want to control the center, since we're going to use this first sketch to drive this uh, layout. Let's go ahead here and go back and edit our guy. It'll roll the history back. Three inch is not great. Let's convert over to driven so we can get a feel for it. And now when we grab this, we should just drag it out. There we go. So the shake loop, keep in mind these are equal relationships, so as I pull it, it gets longer and longer. Nice. Keep in mind Shigley has calculated out some center distance. There's a formula. <laughs> it's painful. Um, what we're going to do is set up parameters to get this aligned correctly. But first, let's set up the jointing. So I'm going to hide the big D. Right now it's still loose. I'm going to try and use the same joint for both. Uh, I'm going to pull this away so I can see what's going on. Press J. It probably is going to ask us eventually, maybe not, uh, do you want to uh, memorize its position? Let's go with component one. Now, again, it's tempting to go ahead here and try and lock onto this object. Another way to do this is just to pick D, but it doesn't really work. So one way to do this is to actually hide this and just press the center of the components origin and lock onto this guy. The joint will pull it down. Motion is next. Right now it's defaulting to rigid. I want revolute. That's not the right axis. Right now it's the X. So X is what we're after. Nice. You okay? Let's think about it for a second. Make sure it gets that we get the behavior that we wish. Yeah, good. Now we can see an angle here as well. You can zoom out to get that angle. It's sometimes hard to grab that small. There it is. And just undo back to that. Hide the origin and hide the component. That little flag is the joint. We have a new joint folder here, Revolut one. That's it right there. Nice. Show a big D. Do the same thing. Get them oriented the same. If you missed that, just rewind a bit. And we change our motion over to the X again. Perfect. So now we have both of them correctly attached. Can't move them any other way. Looks good. I'm just undoing to reset my joints back to scratch. Now this is a bit of a jumbled history. You can make this into one folder if you wish. Rejig it and all this stuff, but for now I'm just going to leave it. We're still stuck with this. You'll notice it kind of follows it. It's not live, but it's close. What's our center distance though? Let's have a look at that dimension. Show, I escaped a couple times. Sonic style. Show dimensions. That guy right there. Um, we're going to finish this video off by setting up the parameters here. So our next step is to look at the parameters. What do we have? Well, nothing really, just the revolutes, which we're going to deal with later again. And this sketch well, only has one dimension, and we can see it's not uh, defined as guided, or inspection, or whatever you want to call it. Let's change that over. Can we do it from up here? No, we have to edit the sketch. Right click on that, toggle driving, finish the sketch. Nice. So try not to be too painful uh, this week. So we've given you this formula for center distance. It's based off of the diameters of this of these two sheaves. Uh, also, the length of the belt that we're after, plus a little adjustment. So in Shigley, he does 
B112. Uh, puts an adjustment to that to come up to 113.8 inches altogether, and then a center distance of 42.4. That's complicated. So we've supplied some guides here. So we are going to make these parameters. There's a formula there, it's right above. And we're going to type these in manually. Okay, so that's what the plan is here. So S parameters. And yeah, we could supply this, but yeah, there's the fun and not doing it all together. Uh, send. We'll just leave this right now as at about, what, 40. It's not pointing at anything. We'll adjust this in a second. Uh, what else do we need here? Uh, big D, little d, and LP. So big D, that's 11.0. Uh, D diameter, if you want to put it that way. Diameter. There it is. Little d. Now that is, what is that? The other one was 7.4, I believe. Diameter. Diameter. <laughs> and one last one is L little p. We can't do subscripts here, but close enough. Uh, we'll call that for now. Uh, we're going to use Shigley's number for a moment, which just to make sure we get the right numbers in our formula, that was 113.8 inch. Uh, that's the pitch length of belt. Now, what I'm going to do here is adjust. Uh, we could make the center here. Uh, part of the formula, but it makes sense to me to put the send here. So we can put send in. And you'll notice when we press tab, it adjusts that. So now we're set up to go. Nice. So we're seeing what we want. Let's go back to, in my case, Firefox here. I'm gonna, I might get a, a update here. Yeah, so we've got D is 11, little d 7.4. And here's my formula, copy that. Uh, this is pre-formatted, so I've already done this. So it should work. If you use big D, little d, and LP, all of this should be fine. Press tab. And we should see his answer here for all the parameters that we have, 42.4. Perfect. That is correct. See, okay. So when, there it is. if we set this up, correctly. We are now looking at the belt drive that Shigley is going to be generating in, or has actually as part of his uh, example here. For us, we want a shorter belt. I just to keep it a little smaller. So, and also to make a point about this parameter. So how do we adjust this? Back to parameters. So we're going to do this problem as if nothing else has changed. It might be completely unrealistic. We don't know a lot about uh, the surrounding system here. Let's just change our belt length over to a new length. So a B60. So I'm going to change it over to instead of 113.8, our new value is going to be 61.8 because of that adjustment. So 61.8 inch. You should see an answer coming out of 16.35 inch. Quite compact belt drive. We're going to be doing some checks as we go along for things like angular wrap and all the rest. There we are. We are now kind of set to begin doing some other tasks. So we've got two components from elsewhere. They're modeled out. Um, they are supplied and they're now placed in the right spot with good rotations uh, joints, but not linked yet. The belt's not there yet, so there's a bit of work to do here. So there we go. That's video one. See you in a minute uh, for video two.